everybody, I'm back with another how to paint video. I get asked to do this quite a bit, um, and I don't, I don't particularly, I don't know, think I have a lot to contribute apart from how to get stuff done fast. So when I see a window, an opportunity to do a video that I think might be useful for people, um, I tend to put it together. And this week I was painting through the box set for the Battlezone Frontiers Knockman set. This is that cool kind of like, Hadley's Hope from Aliens, Colony World style terrain. It's very functional, it's very easy to put together. Um, I'm not gonna particularly review like the components of the box, but what I wanted to do was as sort of a, hmm, a sequel to my How to Paint the Terrain in the Age of Sigmar Warcry box set, show you the quickest, easiest way I know how to get done an entire box of terrain and have it look great in the tabletop using just a couple paints, to some really easy to find at the hardware store spray paint, and a couple really simple techniques. So here we go, how to paint an entire Frontiers box in about two hours, give or take, minus drawing time because really the longest part of building this box besides putting it together um it, the painting part is going to be waiting for your spray paint to, to actually dry and then after that it's kind of how long how far do you want to take it detail wise so let's take a look at my finished uh knockman box from battlezone frontiers and then my step-by-step -step on how i got it done so here we go with a few models for scale this is one box set of the battlezone frontiers knockman terrain kits that's give or take a couple walls because i kept a couple unfinished to actually demonstrate this painting process on but that was that was the, the 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 probably the quickest thing to actually paint out of this box which is why i'm going to showcase the techniques for you i got a few models here for scale you can see i got the mastodon hanging out amongst the how blocks i got some krieg guys defending and taking up positions and of course up here on the cool little relay station I got my Vindicare Assassin taking aim at some enemy commander. It also comes with these two um, board tiles. They are 22 by 30, so you get an incursion style table uh, from one of these train kits. That's what I'm gonna actually be showing off. You do get a few extra walls. Uh, you do get uh, enough walls to basically give, give cover across the entire table, so I could do a whole other little sort of enclosure for the uh, relay station if I wanted to. And overall, I painted all the terrain on this table, obviously not the miniatures, but all these terrain uh, I painted in about two hours this morning. I got up around eight, I uh, went for a run, and then came home and I was done by 11. I was done by lunch, basically. <laughs> uh, and it is using a grand total of, for just like the basic terrain, so let's say these guys in this thing, uh, four colors, two washes, and a bunch of spray paint. Um, and that is my that is my number one key trick is get all the big colors done. No airbrush needed, just hardware store spray paint, and you can get some lovely textured color like we have here on this bunker, or we have here as you can see on this um, frontierist building, uh, or even the cool two tones that we have on the walls. Right. So um, the key is contrast, and I'll show you what I use to get that. And I don't mean contrast paint. I mean the actual contrasting of two colors. So I even thought to bring everything I used. So <laughs> um, what did I collect up to do? Well, I, it's it's almost like I'm sponsored by Rust-Oleum. I should be, but these are just my uh, my local hardware store's probably best selection of like hardware paints. Um, and there's some things you want to look for. The number one thing is, is it okay? Hey, you're the French one. I'll flip it over to the English one. Everything's in dual language here because of course we're in Canada. Um, you want to look for this. Is it okay for plastic? Is it okay for plastic? Is it okay for... It's on here somewhere. I always check. <laughs> anyway, the, the chalked ones are good for plastic. Uh, and then these ones here, the word for plastic and more, for plastic and more. So as long as it says it's safe for plastic, that means that the etching agent in it, which is the slightly corrosive uh, thing that's in most spray paints that lets it like grip to the, uh, the surface it's going onto, won't dissolve your paint. But the reason it stays sticky for a while, like this one that you can see here is still a little bit tacky, uh, this one's a little bit less so, is that that's actually the, the dissolution, the dissolving of the plastic, and then it has to chemically reharden. So here we have the wall section unfinished. And then again, we have it um, sprayed a dark, dark brown. And this is my this is my trick here. You want to start everything with a contrasting color. Now, the I wanted all my buildings to be cool colors because the boards themselves were warm colors, and I wanted them to pop off. But I also wanted them to be fairly grounded, to have some kind of a warm color underneath that made them sink down and attach to the ground. So the trick here is that you, you start off basically by hard spray painting everything with like a chocolate brown. Now, you could use... There's a million browns. I particularly like this one, an espresso kind of color. It's dark. It means that the lighter colors pop off of it really nicely. Um, and this is just really cheap. The painter's touch Rust-Oleum is just really cheap. 
you can use any paint brand. Don't worry about like copying the paint brands that I used. Um, the key here is the color choice, right? Make sure it's flat or satin, um, and then give it all a really good coat of this one solid color. Now, the way that you get the fade, and this is no airbrush necessary, is pick your over color. And I've used lots in the past. I have a cool, um, Chuck has like a cool kind of like coral green that I've used for the uh, the wooden stuff on my, um, my AOS terrain, uh, which was really nice. I used grays. I decided for these two. I wanted two sort of complementary colors. I went with a gray and a blue. And what you do is you, and I'm not gonna do this on camera because it would jack up my camera completely and fill this place with terrible fumes. Basically hold the can at 45 degrees and do a light misting. And you're normally gonna spray it from about six inches away if you're gonna prime it, maybe 10 inches away. You're gonna go way back to like 12 or 13 inches out and just do a few passes so that the, it, you know, as long as the temperature's right and it's not too like muggy out, the, the paint is almost kind of like raining down. And what you'll get is you'll get this nice fade. So you can see here now the brown is still visible. It's in all the recesses and it's giving us some interest, like some, some instant sort of like shadow and contrast between dark and light, but it also ties the color to the ground, right? So we have this dark brown. Now you could use a brown closer to this if you want to, or like a red brown. Actually, if you look in between the dirt on this, there is definitely a red brown primer that I've used before that would be perfect. And I would have terrain that really did look like the dust and the dirt was blowing up to the bottom of it. But I don't know what table I'm gonna put this on and I like the darker stuff, so it provides a better contrast. So I use this color instead. Now you can use any color you want. I highly recommend using a, uh, a cool tone over a warm tone, right? But you can use almost any tone over black too. If you wanna do a black primer, this, this same technique works. So here's an example of the gray. And you can see here like half the shading is already done. You've got these nice, sort of like recessed, picked out detail. And we're gonna pick that out a little bit higher with a big dry brush, um, but this is ready to paint. And this is what I'll do my demonstration on is, is these pieces here. But I wanted to show you the pro like the process. Now, the other thing I did for Time Saver is if it's metallic, use a metallic primer instead. So like for instance, over here, just do a sub-assembly. Don't put the whole thing together. Spray one piece with the metallic and the other piece not. Now, I, I didn't do a sub-assembly on this tower. I just held it like at the end, sprayed the end of it, and then sprayed the rest of it and didn't worry about it bleeding too much onto the top or bottom. But you save a ton of time like not having to hand paint that. So break your stuff into chunks and then like same with this um, little gantry. I just kept it separate. And in fact, I can just move it around if I want. I can put it on the other side, wherever I feel like. Um, and then and then spray it with a different primer. So I I did all the metallic separately and then um, gave them a separate dry brush afterwards. And then finally, because I was gonna use decals, and actually just because I really like to seal the dry brushing down, I find dry brushing over top of spray paint can rub off a little bit if you're not gonna you know, seal it afterwards. I use just a cheap matte clear Rust-Oleum um, dull coat. Now, I will say that be careful with clear coats, be careful with temperature, nobody wants to like, you know, donut glaze. We used to call it crispy creaming. You crispy cream, cream your um, your uh, your project when you were done if you used the wrong sort of like um, uh, clear like uh, um, like sort of sealer when you were finished. But I like this one because it it tends to be pretty temperature robust because it has like a fairly heavy duty etching agent in it and it gives a nice sort of satin finish when it's done. So all this stuff's been sealed. You can see I used some decals. Um, and that's the last sort of like time cheat here. It's just, if you want to do little details, don't paint them on. Just go through all your old misused decals. I had some Imperial Eagle ones, a cool little like bannery thing. I just kind of cut them up and put them on and I numbered all my buildings. And that adds a lot, like just teeny little spot details like that. Take that sort of like one color and that's kind of taken to the next level. But again, I did probably the two colors and a wash to pick out sort of like the techie bits and then maybe spent like 15 more minutes just going through everything and picking out some lenses and some computer terminals and stuff like that. And then it was all done. So that's it, right? You could get away with three spray paints, dark tone, uh, cool tone, and then if you have any metallic bits, or just two, if you were just gonna do the Frontier stuff all the same color. Like, you could very easily get away with like just two spray paints and be done most of your painting basically in about 15 minutes. So priming all of that, you know, I just put some uh, latex gloves on, go outside. I literally just hold them in my hand and spray paint them with one hand while I, I wear like a little filter mask to keep the, the fumes out of my nose because I don't want to die too young. Um, <laughs> and you've got like most of your base tones down, as you can see here. And for a lot 
five people, this is good enough. Like that's playable right there. You know what I mean? If you had a table full of that, that's not bad. But let's just crank it up a notch, bam it with the Spice Weasel, like they say in Futurama, and uh, show you a couple extra layers that takes it from, you know, that's, that's terrain to kind of finished. Now, I'm not gonna lie, one of my favorite things about miniature painting terrain is that it's like one of the few types of miniature painting that you can just do standing up. Um, and it's super easy to do because one of, this is actually kind of like a, another hack is that when you are painting terrain, you should be looking at it from as far away as you're gonna be looking at it while you're playing a game. No one picks up your buildings and sticks them next to their face. It just doesn't happen. So stuff you're gonna need, uh, paints I used for these, I used, and actually I'm gonna paint all four of these. I have two of these each set up because I, the symmetry in me couldn't let me do like one of these at a time. <laughs> um, I got some long beard gray. It's a dry paint. Uh, it's super great for terrain and just like picking the edges around stuff. Um, I have lead belcher. I have Necron compounds because those two go together. And I got a little bit of Abaddon black for picking out the pipes and stuff. Then I've got some Nelm oil and some Agrexer shade gloss because that's fun and great for everybody. Uh, and you just need a, an off-cut piece of, I like, when I dry brush terrain, I actually like a dry surface to prepare my brush on. So I usually cut a piece of like cardboard, this is just a piece of box, um, to, to clean my brush off on. And then I have a couple sizes of the dry brush. I really like this scenery brush that GW made, but you can use any big makeup brush, right? Uh, this one's seen a lot of work and it's losing some bristles, but any soft-ended makeup brush will work for this. Big is good, like have a big fat brush. This one's probably, I don't know, like an inch and a half across, all fanned out. And that's a good size. You want some paper towel, obviously, and you want to have um, a quick, like, you know, my disgusting water pot for, <laughs> for cleaning off your paintbrushes when you are uh, done and cleaning off between colors. But I don't actually tend to do that very much. What I do tend to do is actually dry my brush off. Like, I'm more concerned with drying it off than I am with getting the paint out of it. And so having paper towel handy, which I'd completely forgotten when I started this video, uh, is a good idea too. So. Let's start off with this. We're gonna give everything a big fat dry brush. Um, now the only problem with these paint pots, they tend to be very small and this brush is very big. So I will actually get like just as a piece of brass rod and I'll gouge out a little piece of this and throw it on the palette so I can grab extra paint quickly and don't have to sit here with my pot open. Having your pot open while you're painting is a capital sin. There we go. Uh, and then I can just move this around here and this will allow me to get the paint all over the brush in like an even distribution. So what you're trying to do here is actually get the paint all over the end of the brush. It's not just in one spot. That's a big mistake people make when they're dry brushing. And you're just going to, now the trick with this is you want to dry brush the direction that you want the color to go. So you want it to go lightest to darkest, you're gonna dry brush top down, right? I usually do it maybe again, the same I was, as I was spray painting. It's so like a 45 degree angle, top to bottom. And that's gonna pick out all these hard edges and just give it a final kind of highlight along all the surfaces that makes everything pop. So it's super, like that's done. It's, the nice thing with these dry paints is they come out basically ready to dry brush with, and you can just grab some more and move on. Now I'm gonna just rip the top off this maybe. No, we'll just keep on cramming the brush in here. Let me use a different brush, get some on the palette. And then get some more. And then once again, keep on brushing at that right angle. And that's gonna make all the like little details of this pop out, right? So you have all these little like handles, the finials, the, the like the bolts and stuff pop. And, and really, this is all I did to the walls on that table. These walls are almost finished. The only other thing I did was, and I'll show you the trick for this, is I painted the little lights that are in the corners. There's a little light here, a little light here. And the way I did that was, again, I cheated because we've put a light color on those lights now. I just washed them with, <laughs> a bit of um a bit of null oil and then that darkens on like edges them all makes them pop out and then i throw a little yellow in there for the lenses and we're finished now same with this guy we're just gonna go top to bottom right trying to go in the direction that we want the light to go so up to down and then the top is the one surface that like you want to maybe spend a little bit more time in and the trick there is go in a circle if you can and that's gonna make the edges of this all pop out as well. And again, a big brush. Now you can see it's, it's really subtle, but you can see the difference here. This one's just, the top one's just a little bit more defined, right? You can see all the edges like that diamond plating and stuff on the deck. And again, 
from two feet away, where you're going to be looking at it as you stand up playing at your gaming table, it's going to pop out and make all the details kind of stand out. So you're going to get the doors. And then again, it's nice. You could actually cheat a lot too with contrast paints because you're putting this beige over top of everything. If you wanted to do like the keypads on this later on, like if you go back, if you get this finished, you get it on the gaming table, you play some games on it, you're happy. And then you want to go back and add some detail. All those little keypads, little dials and stuff, because you put this beige down on, it'll take contrast paint perfectly. So you can just go over with contrast paints then and then add like color to all these little dials. You can add a little keypads and stuff in color, like little buttons. They could all be colored all of a sudden. And a little bit more. So again, just picking out the edges, the leading edges on everything. Going in circles on the top, just to try and make that deck plating pop. But it doesn't need much. The spray paint's done most of the work for us, which is really cool. And I, I kind of, uh, uh, the, the biggest part of this lesson is using spray paint at a 45 degree angle to, to basically steal a bunch of time back because you and actually this train builds pretty quick too i shouldn't i shouldn't say it doesn't i built this whole uh the first whole box in like one sitting in basically a movie sam and i sat down and she built a bunch of the uh the second box and i built the first box while we watched like a movie basically um and by the time the movie was done i'd finished like the first box so there you go dry brushing's finished now i will wash this mostly just to get the Beige off it's because I'm done with this brush. I'm not going to use this big one again. And because by the time I want to use it again, I want it to be dry. Let's give it a good wash. And then we're going to get in there with some brown. And now, or not some brown, some, some metallic, some lead belcher. So these could be kind of finished if I wanted them to be. But you do always want one accent on stuff. I finished the gray. The accent I'm choosing is the metallics. And that's going to make these look kind of industrially. I tend to use old starter brushes. The old paint kits used to come with these. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick out the things that look sort of machiney, right? So I'm gonna pick out these little tanks and this vent. I'm gonna pick out the fans. And this color is a lit, just a tiny bit darker than what I'm using. So it, it really popped on the blue. But once I go and ink wash this with a little bit of known oil, it's going to pop out on here too. And this just gives us something that makes it look like it's not all entirely one color. You could even do, I did these in bronze on the other one, but I'll do them in the metallic color on this one. You can do these little like name plates. And if you get any of the edges, just use your thumb and wipe it off because it's going to come right off. There you go. See? And then all these little vents I'll get. I'll get these little like techno y gizmos. There's another name plate on there, which I'll get. Until I don't make painting videos because I'm like going in another frame. And then all these dials and stuff too. Or I could leave these actually if I want to do them with contrast paint later. Maybe I'll do that. And I'll just do the vents instead. And like these little techno gizmos. And the fans. I'll do the fans inside of here. I'll pick them out. And once again, if you get a little extra somewhere, wipe your brush even and just wipe it out. Wipe out the stuff that you don't want to see. I think that's all of them. Uh, no, other side. More fans. Just give a little 360. The one thing is if you do decide to use a piece of this as a palette, your paint will get sucked into it and dry really fast. <laughs> so using garbage as a palette. So now where I'm, I'm kind of like wet brushing this on, I'm just kind of like roughly painting it in. It's disappearing faster <laughs> than I'd like it to. Uh, the other fan and in here and then these vents and then I already done the front. Yep. So that one's done. Get to the next one. Maybe I'll just speed this up and montage it. All right, so there's my contrast color. Now to make it really pop, to really bang the spice weasel, we're gonna give it a little non-oil, non-oil shade. And now, because that is pretty close to the, the rest of the color, you're gonna really see these pop off now. 
So they're going to get lined nicely. And I don't tend to use the gloss for this because it tends to stay kind of shiny and I don't want that. I'm just going to use regular old non oil shade. What <laughs> the actual truth is I use whatever I have more of. <laughs> I'm more worried about using the gloss for miniatures. I have a bunch of shade I don't really use that much anymore because I use the gloss so much. So I'm just going to put that in there, put that in there. And just having one little detail color is going to really make these pop off. Right? Because all of a sudden, look, see how there's, it looks intentional, right? The gray looks like it's, oh yeah, they, paint, they sprayed these habs, these hab blocks gray or they came out like factory gray or something like that. But here's like these little techno bits that are, actually important. And what you could do too is if you wanted to make these dials pop later again, if you wanted to make them look a bit more intentional, throw a little of that wash in there. Even if you haven't dry brushed with the metallic, you can use the wash to just make details pop, right? So just paint it through these details and get them to kind of get a little bit black lined and pop off. And even like, because you can oil smear with it too. Like you can have like running down, like it's a bit of oil wash, right? Like it's oil, like coming out of an engine. So with these, and there's one done. And already that gives it a bit of, see, there's a difference now. You can see like the intentional techno bits. Come a little bit more there. I think I forgot a spot on the top too. But it's already got, a bit more detail to it. And then with the other one. And for the walls, again, it's just the parts I did with metallics. So it's just going to be to dab some onto these lights and give them a little ring so you can see the detail pop out or get sort of like black lines like that. And that's it. And so you can stop right here. And in fact, if I was just doing quick and dirty terrain, I would stop right here and this would be good enough. I would have functional, painted, ready to go terrain. And after the drawing time for that spray paint, I mean, how long have we been, how long, you're watching this live, I mean, I sped up a couple minutes, but it's probably no more than like 20 minutes of painting for four big chunky pieces of terrain. So you put it together, you spray paint it, you get the dry brushing done, and now I'll show you some details. So here's one of the blue gray ones versus one of the gray ones. And you can see the only real differences I did is I did maybe one or two extra colors. So a little bit of brass um, on the, uh, the name plates instead of uh, the metallic or the uh, lead belcher. And that's what the Irex was for. I actually didn't need it for this. I needed one wash basically. Um, and then I picked out with a little bit of uh, Deathcore Creed cocky, all of the pipes and then a bit of, oh geez, I don't even remember what the Averland Sunset highlighted with. It's a Naz drag yellow. I don't even know what it's called anymore. It used to be bad moon yellow <laughs> for all the lights. And then literally just random old Imperial decals. It's like a command skull from the Space Marine ones, a little knight battle honor and a number because all the halves are going to be numbered and that's it. And you know, like you put them together. They're not that different. A little bit extra detail on one. Uh, it goes a long way and it, I mean, it doesn't take very long. Throw some decals on there. If you got a few extra minutes. I think I could do like lenses. Maybe the other one had um, a couple of little like, I did some greens and stuff on a few of them where there was little like consoles and stuff. But other than that, I mean, this is done. This is a fully, this is, this is a fully functional gaming train at this point. And from the time basically I picked it up after I spray, spray painted it to the time I was on maybe like 15 minutes for two of them and a couple of walls as well. So times out by the rest of the train in the box and you know, add a few accent colors if you want to. And this is super fast and easy. So lean into that spray paint. There it is all together. Quick and dirty paint jobs on my Nachman terrain. Uh, to get it on the table in a, a super quick amount of time. And what's cool is having the second set of buildings um, and actually still two less walls than it comes with because there's eight. 
Uh, I have some nice verticality because it's designed to stack. It's a landing platform. You can glue the uh, the buildings together to make it like one giant building or have them separate. So it's a landing pad or like a bunker hatch or whatever. Uh, and you can see there, that's that's some good line of sight block of terrain. It's nice and tall. My uh, my night titan can barely see over top of it. And yeah, fills up an incursion size board real nice. So get ready to see some some games on this coming up soon. So there you go, quick and dirty tips to get your terrain painted quickly. The old double rattle can method never fails. Um, and as the last video was a, a long time ago now, 2018, 2019, um, I figured it was time to update it and do a new one for a new set of terrain. Uh, and if you are painting through, of course, your like big backlog of terrain and want to get on the table fast, this is the best way I know how to do it. Mix up a couple of those top coat colors to give some variation. I did two different grays for this one, obviously. Um, and you'll get a great, beautiful looking table terrain really fast. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more of these how-tos very infrequently in the future. Till then, I'm Ash. Happy reading. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements, like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.